Hey guys, as you guys know, there's a lot of talk about gold manipulation, paper, physical manipulation. I mean, you get this all the time. You have a lot of my guests who come on my program who believe that there's a lot of manipulation going on. And my take on all this, all markets are rigged, upside, downside, sideways, etc. But over the past few years, when I first started out, I always used to say JP Morgan manipulation, this and that, right? Most of the same thing that you hear on some of these big name silver sites. But after looking over the data for the past few years and also talking to many individuals, traders, etc., my views have slightly changed to a certain degree. And I believe all markets are rigged. I mean, just look at what happened in LIBOR. But at the same time, there's more to it than simply manipulation by central banks and the banksters and I'm going to show you just a few charts that I compiled up and they are ETF charts over the past three years or yeah it's actually two and a half years close to there I started in September of 2011 like right around here and why I started around here is because we saw I think gold topping out at 1923 times and for the data, I could show you my Excel spreadsheet and then we could get back to this diagram over here. And for all intents and purposes, I just took a one day out of the month. It was usually the 17th, 19th, or 21st of the month for the past two and a half years, right? And I looked at the corn ETF, the GLD, which is a gold ETF, a coffee ETF, and the SGT ETF, which is a sugar ETF. Note for the sugar ETF, there seems to be a lot of decay in this ETF compared to the actual price movement, but I actually like the price. I actually like looking at the corn and the GLD ETFs because those were similar to the moves to the downside if you look at what actually happened in these prices. But I'll go back to the graph right now. Okay, so I took a look at number one, the prices in fiat. That's what I labeled here on the vertical axis, horizontal axis, you could see just the dates. And you could see I color coded it, all these ETFs. And I noted that the GLD here, right, gold ETF, and we could calculate the percentage wise when I switch back to the other number one spreadsheet. But look at this. You see it's like around 170-ish. And then today as a, today's actually Saturday when I'm doing the video, but I think this calculated up to maybe the 17th of January and it's like in the 120 somewhere around there so you could see a move in the price of the GLD so if you look at that and if you want to compare to another ETF right look at the SGG right you've seen over what is it a 50% move to the downside but I feel that with this ETF though there is moved to the downside because of decay. Sugar prices did go down over the past few years based on the charts that I've looked at. And coffee, right? Coffee ETF has also gone to the downside, right? I'm going to show you a graph of that later on or the price structures of the ETFs. And if you want to look at corn ETF, it has also gone to the downside. I did a video on this last week about the inflation as well, but based on this we have seen moves to the downside in these commodities I mean there are some commodities that have gone nowhere I think grain ETF went nowhere it was flat over the past few years so you have to remember that just because I'm showing you this data doesn't necessarily mean that other commodities have gone in the same way and it just seems that there must be some sort of cyclical move to the downside right it doesn't necessarily follow the same pattern but we could see that the trend line is down. Same thing with sugar, same thing with coffee, and same thing with corn, right? I mean, we could just look at the percentage-wise moves in these ETFs right now. Okay, so now let's look at January 17, 2014. I pulled this off just Google Finance, just put it into a spreadsheet, and I just once again showed you I did it usually on one day of the month just for all intents and purposes as a disclosure and if you look at uh, when I started this like the 19th of 
September 2011. Let's just look at the corn ETF, right? And let's get the calculator out. Okay, so at the high, it was 45.8 minus, let's scroll all the way up for corn, and that is 30.96. And then, what is it again? I hate doing this. 45.8. So divided by 45.8. 32% move to the downside. Let's put that here. 32% move to the downside. Let's look at the GLD here, right? GLD is like 121 as of the other day. I, it's hard to believe it's 121. I thought it was a little higher than that, but whatever. It's close enough to what I've seen before. So it's 176.83 on September 19th, 2011. Let's do minus 121. And divide by 176.83. Thirty-one point five seven percent move to the downside. Holy crap, that's insane. <laughs> okay, so now if you want to look at coffee, right? Coffee ETF. These are moves which are a little more than what happened in the GLD and corn. And by the way, I looked at corn prices and gold prices. They're like. 40% moves to the downside. So the ETFs actually lost less value. I thought there'd be more decay there, but I, I'm i actually surprised about that. I did a video about that once again last week. But let's look at coffee, 67.17. I did 67.16, whatever. It's not gonna matter by a penny. 23.26. And then what's that number again? My God, I hate this, 67.17. Sixty-seven point one seven. Sixty-five 65% move to the downside. I don't know if coffee went down that much, but the ETF is showing that. So those actually held coffee ETFs, buy and hold position, didn't work out for you guys. And the sugar ETF, right? I don't think sugar went down that much percentage-wise, but it just seems a high percentage move downside or move to the downside. And if you look at here, 51.27, and that's divided by 94.5. 45.7% move to the downside. So there you go. So we've seen huge moves in these paper ETFs, whether you want to call them phony baloney paper. Well, we've seen huge moves to the downside and those individuals saying that, hey, guess what? Gold is manipulated. Okay, if gold is manipulated to the extent that everybody's talking about, I believe that all markets are rigged as a disclosure, but then people will have to respond to why did corn go down so much why did coffee ETFs go down so much why did sugar ETFs go down so much and I chronicled orange juice futures also orange juice futures I'm not even looking at an ETF it went down 40 some percent over the past few years so the way that you look at it and I could go back to the graph right now I don't know where is it yeah it's here so if you look at it right now we have to look at the fact that traders, they took down gold. Speculators took down gold. But they also took down some of these other commodities. And there seems to be more than what a lot of the individuals that I talked about have been saying. And um, I'll look at a few other things on why I believe that these markets have gone down. And yes, it is because of central bank manipulation, but I think it has to deal with the yen carry trade. I'm going to show you what's going on with that. Okay, now I want to show you this uh, Japanese yen, right? And if you look at this over here, you have to look at the fact that Japanese currency is the carry trade. 
or it's the currency that used for the carry trade, meaning that you take the yen and invest it in a higher interest rate currency, maybe like the US dollar. And what I find when I talk to many gold bugs, I think I've only talked to one individual who may agree with this, and his name is Norman Green. I interviewed him roughly a month ago, and I think we're talking about this off air. But regardless, if you notice over the past four or five years, the yen was weakening, excuse me, was strengthening up until Fukushima-ish, right? And you notice that you saw deleveraging going on, and because of what was going on with Fukushima, you saw in dollar terms, the dollar was getting weaker, but the Japanese yen was getting stronger. As you can see, it's like 100-ish all the way to 76. And if you notice that gold prices got to like 1920, right? Notice that the yen is like 76 here, meaning that $1 would get you 76 yen. But now, if you fast forward the past few years, and what I missed on the rally is you had the yen weakening and the dollar strengthening, right? And what allowed, or what happened was you saw all this easy money come into the system, especially before Abe was elected. So this is what made the stock market, in my opinion, go up. And yeah, you did have companies beat their earnings, whether they were managed earnings or whatever. I mean, whether the earning expectations changed or whatever, they beat earnings, right? And you had central bank money flowing in and you had a lot of stock buybacks going on. So that's why you had the stock market go up, in my opinion, last year. Rally that I missed, right? I completely missed the boat here. And the thing is now, if you look at, first of all, what's going on in the gold and silver market, gold got hammered, right? Up until like recently, right? You've seen a rally in December, starting from December, right? A short rally. So if you look at it, it has to deal more with, number one, the yen carry trade, in my opinion. Sure, markets are rigged in all short for excuse me, all forms and fashion. But if you look at it, some parts are cyclical, and some parts have to deal with central bank manipulation coming from the Japanese yen carry trade. Because just because of central banks are rigging the paper markets, as everybody's talking about, guess what? There needs to be another catalyst for gold and silver to go down. In my opinion, it has to deal with this yen carry trade. Could I be wrong? Yeah, but this is just my own analysis, and I think this is what gold bugs don't seem to look at. I'm like one of the few ones to look at even this yen carry trade. Just try to overlay it or compare it against the price of gold. And I don't know, it's quite interesting. And you have to remember that we have a deleveraging system right now. We have a lot of debt that is being deleveraged. But the only reason why we haven't seen deflation is because the government's coming in and printing all this monopoly money. Anyways, uh, before I leave, if you guys want to check my other YouTube channel out, you could go to the link below. And also, if you want to look at my video newsletters, you want to check that out, I'll put the link below. Anyways, thanks for listening to me, guys. Talk to you another time. Bye.